What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is a 2023 Acura MDX technology package. And the MDX is a significant car because in the United States, it is the best selling luxury SUV of all time with a third row seat. So today what I'm going to do is I'm gonna review this car for you. We're gonna look at the engine and the transmission. We're gonna measure out the cargo space. We'll have a look at the passenger room. We'll look at the convenience features on this MDX technology package. And of course, the safety features. And as always, if some of that sounds interesting and some of it sounds boring, check the description below for timestamps. Now we'll start with the engine and the transmission and this 2023 Acura MDX technology package does have Acura's venerable 3.5 liter V6. They've used various versions of this for many, many years. In this particular vehicle, it puts out 290 horsepower and 267 torque. And it is notable because it is a naturally aspirated engine. No turbos, no superchargers. That's becoming increasingly rare in the marketplace these days, especially in the luxury class that this car is in. So if you're looking for a naturally aspirated engine, you don't like the idea of a turbo for whatever whatever reason, the MDX does offer that to you. But if you like a turbo, you can get that as well. If you move up to the MDX Type S, that will come with a three liter turbocharged V6 that puts out a very nice 355 horsepower and 354 torque. Now, all new MDX models do come equipped with a 10 speed automatic transmission. There's no options there. They all have the same transmission. This particular technology package MDX is front wheel drive. Acura's super handling all wheel drive system is an option on the lower trim levels. It is standard on the Type S and also on the Advance model with the 3.5 liter V6. So if you move up the ramp, you're gonna have the all wheel drive as standard, but on the lower levels, front wheel drive is available if you don't need the all wheel drive system. Now we're gonna move on to the passenger space in this 2023 MDX and I'm six foot five. I'm not even gonna to try to get into the third row seat, but I will say that there is more room back there than I would have expected for a vehicle of this size. I think Acura's done a good job with the space utilization there. I'm showing you footage right now of the leg room in the third row seat with the second row seat all the way back. You can kind of slide that second row seat fore and aft, depending on how much space you need at the time based on how many passengers are in there. So if you're thinking to buy a nice luxury SUV to haul your kids around, the MDX could be a very good choice provided your kids aren't fully grown and six foot five like me. But with all that being said, let's see if I can sit behind myself from the first to second row in a 2023 MDX. Okay, so this is definitely successful, I think, which I expected. I have enough knee room here in the front. I have enough headroom. And if I get out, and sit in the back, ah, I've got enough knee room there. I have enough headroom. Very, very comfortable. Plenty of room in the first and second row of the MDX. And if we really wanted to, we could still have some kids behind me. There's a little bit of leg room there. So that's the third row. So I'm pretty impressed with the passenger space in this car, especially the third row seat. They've done a good job with the various redesigns to give you more room back there if you need it for that many people. Now we are going to measure out the cargo space in this vehicle. So I'm going to get my handy dandy laser tape measure and do just that. The length of the rear cargo area with the third row seat in place is one foot and nine inches. The width of the cargo area at the rear of the cargo area going into that little cubby hole there, four feet, five inches. And it should be noted, it's very easy to fold down the third row seat in this car. You just pull that, the headrest goes down, push the seat forward, and there we go. The length of the rear cargo area with the third row seat folded flat, but the second row seat in place is approximately four feet, one inches. I do have the second row seat slid all the way back right now. 
So you could potentially adjust that and get a couple more inches of cargo length there if you needed it. The width of the cargo area in between the wheel wells there at the narrowest point is three feet and nine inches. The height of the cargo area when you have the third row seat folded down in that area is two feet and five inches. The length of the rear cargo area with the third row and the second row seat folded down is six feet and nine inches. And again, that's kind of an approximation because that passenger seat right there is in sort of a midway point. So you could make that a little longer, or a little shorter if you wanted to. But it should be noted that you do have a nice flat area with the third row and second row seats folded down. So if you want to camp in your new MDX, have at it. It can be very comfortable if you folded everything down. And if you need to lift something into the rear cargo area on your MDX, you are going to have to lift it two feet and six inches off the ground. And just for fun, we'll have a look under here. You do have a nice feature here. You'll notice that on the other side of this, it is kind of a rubber, plastic, more durable material. And you can actually remove this piece and flip it over if you want the rubber plastic bit to be the floor, just to make it a little bit more durable. We have a sort of hidden cargo compartment in the rear, which is very nice. And there's a couple of interesting things back here. If I open this up, that is a tire sealant kit. So you do not get a spare tire in the MDX, but you get a tire sealant kit. And this funny little thing has a picture of a gas can putting gasoline in a car. So what's in here? Well, because this car has Honda's capless fuel filler system, it's a little more complicated than just putting any old funnel down there. So they give you a specific funnel here to fill up the gas. If you ever run out of gas in your MDX, if you have one of these cars, that's where that is. And um, always fill up your gas tank. But if you do need to add gas, you're going to need that piece to do it because of the capless fuel filler system. Now we're going to start by talking about the convenience features on this MDX technology package. Now the technology is one level up from the base, so certain things on this car are options. But it should be noted that even on a base MDX, a lot of really nice features do come standard. Panoramic moonroof, blind spot monitors, third row seat, heated front seats. You get all that stuff even in the most basic trim level. And especially if you're looking at some of this car's German competitors, some of those items might be optional on cars with much higher base prices. And of course, you get my favorite feature, the remote operated power windows. Those are standard as well. Now we're going to talk about the convenience features in the back seat, and there are a few things worth noting. Three zone climate control is standard on the MDX, so you've got dual zone for the front passengers and then a third zone for your rear passengers. You also have USB charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet back here so that your back seat passengers can keep their devices charged. The technology package does give you rear sunshades. That's some very high technology right there. So that is one thing that's an upgrade from the base on this car. And all MDXs have a removable center seat in the second row. That does give you some flexibility if you'd rather have the sort of captain's chair look in the second row or make it easier for the third row passengers to kind of scoot in between the seats. If you have small children using that third row seat, they may prefer that. It does give you some nice flexibility in the cabin and it's a thoughtful feature. Now we're going to move to the front cabin and talk about the convenience features up here. Another thing that the technology package adds is the Milano leather seats with contrasted stitching. It is a very high quality leather. The seats look nice and they're quite comfortable. More along the line of the theme of technology, the technology package also gives us the factory navigation system built into the screen. Now, this brings us on to the Acura True Touchpad interface. If you read reviews of this car online, this True Touchpad interface does get criticized as being sort of hard to use, not easy to figure out. And there is a little bit of a learning curve on it, but 
I find it to be pretty easy to use. I've been driving this car for a couple of days and it hasn't given me too many issues. First, I'm gonna point out what I like about it. The ergonomics are very nice. You have this little kind of leather wrist pad to put your wrist on and then your hand can just very naturally reach the true touchpad interface. When you're using Acura's software, the navigation system and the other Acura software that's built in to the screen, it works very well. It's kind of a one-to-one -one ratio there. So it's easy to put your finger where you want it and get the option that you want up on the screen. Where it becomes slightly more difficult is if you start using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is included on all of these cars and it is wireless, but Apple's software, I haven't tried it with an Android phone yet, but my understanding is it's the same way with Android, doesn't work on the one-to-one -one interface with the Acura TrueTouch pad. So there's a little bit of a learning curve with the Apple CarPlay. You kind of have to learn to use the pad to scroll through the various options um, that you can use on the screen with either the Apple CarPlay or the Android Auto. It's not impossible to use. It's something that you would get used to. Uh, I've already gotten used to it just in the couple of days that I've had this car to drive around, but it is something to consider. I kind of like it that I don't have to lean forward to touch the touchscreen, but some people might find it a little bit less intuitive. So there is that. One thing that just about everybody agrees is pretty great in this car is the ELS Studio sound system. There are various versions of this in the Acura products. In this MDX technology, it's kind of the most basic version of the ELS Studio, but it does sound excellent. If you move up to the higher trim levels, you do get more features. You also get the iconic drive system, which gives you 27 themes that kind of light the car up at night. And these are named after various places, Pacific Coast Highway, different racetracks, Baja Highway 1, etc. So it just kind of makes the car look a little bit nicer at night and gives you some personalization and customization since there are 27 different themes you can use. I'm sure you'll find one that suits you well. Another thing that I really key in on on new cars are the USB ports, and I really like the way that they work in the front of this Acura. They're in kind of a little pod that can pop up, and then you have a USB-A and a USB-C charging port. And then in the center console, we have an additional USB-A and a 12-volt charging outlet as well and wireless charging is included on this technology model so that you can charge your devices wirelessly if you don't feel like plugging them in. Now, of course, being a modern luxury technologically advanced car, this Acura also includes a digital gauge cluster. And I do like the way that it works in this car because you can change the way that the gauges look. You can change between advanced, which makes the gauges look a little, I don't know, avant-garde, technologically advanced, or crafted, which gives you a more traditional look with a sort of analog looking tachometer and speedometer. I like the fact that they give you different gauge setups, but I really wish I had more. Acura, can I please get like one of those horizontal speedometers? that they used to put on the old American cars that only went up to 85 miles an hour, but make it go up to like 130. I just wanted to cover the whole screen all the way across, you know, like a 1979 Ford LTD or something. It's just software, put it in there, it'd be great. Now we'll move on to the safety features on the Acura MDX and all 2023 MDX models come standard with Acura Watch. This is not some sort of smartwatch that connects to your car. That is the name for Acura's suite of active safety features. So Acura Watch includes the collision mitigation braking system, advanced pedestrian detection, road departure mitigation system, forward collision warning system, lane departure warning system, low speed braking with parking sensors on this technology package, and of course, you also get the adaptive cruise control with low speed follow and the lane keeping assist. So essentially what all this means is that the car is always watching out. It has cameras and radar sensors that look forward. If it senses an obstacle, be it another vehicle, a pedestrian, something else, it will beep at you to tell you to stop. 
If you're not stopping, it will hit the brakes for you to try to prevent the collision or at least lessen the severity of it. If you're drifting out of your lane, it can beep at you to tell you to get back in your lane, or it can correct the steering depending on how you have the settings set. And then of course you have the adaptive cruise control which can maintain a distance from the car in front of you and the lane keeping assist which can kind of help you control the steering at speeds above 40 miles an hour as long as the car's camera can read the lane lines to keep you in the middle of the lane. If you'd like to see a video on how to use that lane keeping assist and the adaptive cruise control, there'll be a link in the description. And on this technology package, you also get the front and rear parking sensors, so those can beep at you if you're getting very close to something at low speeds, and you have the low speed braking, so the brakes can be applied as well if the car thinks you're gonna hit something based on the data from those sensors. Blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert is also standard. The way Acura has this set up is the blind spot monitoring warning light is inside of the cabin. Um, normally, I prefer it to be on the mirror, but I kind of like it in this Acura because they use the proper logo for the blind spot monitoring, so I know exactly what the car is telling me. I find that to be more intuitive than the recent Nissan products that I've driven where it's just a yellow light. So I do really like the blind spot monitoring system in this car. It works well, and it is nice that it's a standard feature, even on a base model MDX. Thank you so much for watching my review of this 2023 Acura MDX technology package. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching to the end. If you did like it, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel, and have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.